Today is February 8, 2020. It is the Sabbath day. And I would like to start to talk about God's timing, God's appointed times, His seasons, which reflect His plan and God's calendar in the sky. Before we get into that, I want to go over some things and establish a foundation of understanding. So much of the time in Scripture, prophecy is not understood, or it is looked at as very physical and the more we grow in the Spirit of God we can see clearer into everything he is doing and understand the spiritual intent behind things it is very important to grow in that and stay connected to Christ because he is the head of the church and there is a lot of confusion in this time a lot of confusion due to religion God calls it Babylon spiritual Babylon confusion it's fornication against his ways And God calls his people out of this confusion to be separate, come out, and walk in his paths that he has set for us from the beginning. So before we get into the timing and God's calendar, We have to talk about spiritual Judah and carnal Judah. And I want to start out in uh, the book of John, chapter 4. Verse 3, he left Judea and departed again into Galilee. He needed to go through Samaria, and he came to the city of Samaria, he came to a city of Samaria, which is called Sakar, near the parcel of ground that Jacob gave to his son Joseph. Now Jacob's well was there. Jesus, therefore, being wearied with his journey, sat thus on the well, and it was about the sixth hour. So it was about noon, 12 p.m. So the sun is high in the sky. Warm day. Here comes a woman of Samaria to draw water. Jesus said to her, give me to drink. For his disciples were gone away to the city to buy meat. And said the woman of Samaria to him, How is it that you, being a Jew, ask drink of me, which am a woman of Samaria? For the Jews have no dealings with Samaritans. Jesus answered and said to her, If you knew the gift of God and who it, who it is that said to you, Give me to drink, you would have asked of him, and he would have given you living water. The woman said to him, Sir, you have nothing to draw the water with, and the well is deep. From where then have you that living water? Are you greater than our father Jacob, who gave us the well, and drank thereof himself, and his children, and his cattle? Jesus answered and said to her, Whoever drinks of this water shall thirst again. But whoever drinks of the water that I shall give him 
shall never thirst. But the water that I shall give him shall be in him a well of water springing up into everlasting life. The woman said to him, Sir, give me this water that I thirst not, neither come here to draw. Jesus said to her, Go call your husband and come here. The woman answered and said, I have no husband. Jesus said to her, You have well said, I have no husband, for you have had five husbands, and he whom you now have is not your husband. In that said you truly. The woman said to him, Sir, I perceive that you are a prophet. Our fathers worshipped this mountain, worshipped in this mountain, and you say that in Jerusalem is the place where men ought to worship. Jesus said to her, Woman, believe me, the hour comes when you shall neither in this mountain nor yet at Jerusalem worship the Father. You shall... You worship what you do not know. We know what we worship, for salvation is of the Jews. But the hour comes, and, and now is, when true worshipers shall worship the Father in spirit and in truth. For the Father seeks such to worship Him. God is a spirit, and they that worship Him must worship Him in spirit and in truth. The woman said to Him, I know that Messiah comes, which is called Christ. When He is come, He will tell us all things. Jesus said to her, I that speak to you am he. I want to go to Romans. Chapter 3. Actually, I want to start out in chapter 2. Paul speaking to the church. Verse 28, For he is not a Jew which is one outwardly, neither is that circumcis circumcision is outward in the flesh, but he is a Jew which is one inwardly, and circumcision is that of the heart in the spirit, and not in the letter, whose praise is not of men, but of God. Chapter 3 What advantage then has the Jew? Or what profit is there of circumcision? much in every way, chiefly because that to them were committed the oracles of God. Now, we must understand at the coming of Jesus Christ, his first coming, all of the blessings were transferred to the followers of Christ. The spiritual blessings are given to those in Christ. This includes the law of God written on the heart. Very important to understand the blessings of Judah. Jesus Christ was from the tribe of Judah. And this transfer came at his first coming. We look at Genesis 49. 
Judah, you are whom your brothers shall praise. Your hand shall be in the neck of your enemies. Your father's children shall bow down before you. Judah is a lion's whelp from the prey. My son, you are gone up. He stooped down, he couched as a lion, and as an old lion, who shall rouse him up? The scepter, the ruler, the king shall not depart from Judah, nor a lawgiver from between his feet, until Christ. And to him shall the gathering of the people be. To walk in spirit, to understand, to be attached to Jesus Christ in, in spirit. Carnal Judah did not see Christ. They did not recognize the Messiah. So they thought they can save themselves by the letter of the law. By keeping the law, they can achieve individual salvation. And they did not understand the spirit of the law at all. They could not understand Christ's teaching about the heart, what comes out of the heart, and that they need to have the commandments on their heart. And he magnified all the commandments and the plan of God, the complete plan of God. And carnal Judea, carnal Judah, most of that did not recognize him. They could not see. They were completely carnal, carnally minded of the flesh, totally of the flesh and not of the spirit. But at Christ's first coming, this blessing in Genesis chapter 49 was given to the followers of Christ. To him shall the gathering of the people be. Now those who were not gathered to him Carnal Judea could not partake of these blessings anymore. To him shall the gathering of the people be, binding his foal to the vine. To the vine. Judah is bound to Christ. Spiritual Judah having the law written on the heart and his clothes binding his foal to the vine his ass is called to the choice vine he washed his garments in wine and his clothes in the blood of grapes so washed in the blood of Christ It is the faith in Christ. It is yet it is both the commandments of God, of Jehovah, and the faith of Christ, the testimony of Christ, that is now in God's chosen people. So carnal Judah has no part in that. And when prophecy is looked at in Scripture, we must not make the mistake of looking at carnal Judah as fulfilling prophecy, because that is very dangerous and deceptive in this time, in this end time here. Carnal Judah today, in our day, follows, till this day, 2,000 years later, the traditions of rabbis from the Talmud. They do not have any part in following Jesus Christ. The religion of Judaism, Orthodox Judaism, again, 
it is all about religion that deceives people. I have love for these people. Nothing but love for all people. But religion is what deceives people, and we must understand that. And this is also deceiving Christians, so that they have no idea what's going on. Orthodox Judaism. Christ condemned the practices of the teachers and elders and rabbis in his day. Today, the same thing is done. They follow tradition, not the commandments of God. And they do not follow Jesus Christ. They are not bound to the vine. They are cut off from God. Still thinking that they can earn their own salvation, not recognizing and not having faith in Jesus Christ, Yeshua the Messiah. That is carnal Judah. And on top of that, they follow many, many in Judaism. First of all, many who call themselves Jews are completely secular. They don't follow the law of God at all. And they still call themselves Jews. So there's total confusion in that in this world. The definition of a Jew to this world is completely different from what Scripture shows. Completely night and day different. It's totally different. And it causes confusion. So you have secular people who call themselves Jews, which is... It doesn't even make sense. Then you have Orthodox Jews following the traditions of the Talmud, the rabbinical oral law, denying Jesus Christ as the Messiah and not being fed at all from God because they're cut off because of religion. Their spirit, their belief is not attached to Jesus Christ. It is not mixed with faith. And then you have more and more this practice of the Kabbalah that is man making himself God. It is from Babylon. It is part of the beast system. It is not the law of God. It is not the Torah. The Kabbalah is from demons. And there are many who call themselves Jews who practice this. Carnal Israel. Carnal Judah. Not discerning the spirit. Genesis 49, binding his foal to the vine and his ass is called to the choice vine. He washed his garments in wine and his clothes in the blood of grapes. So we must be washed by the blood of Christ, forgiven of sins. We have repentance through that, through Christ, to go before the throne of God. We are the temple of God. Those who obey God, God, God's Holy Spirit dwells in them and leads them and guides them. John 15. Jesus said, I am the true vine. My father is the gardener. He cuts off every branch in me that bears no fruit. Every branch that bears fruit, he purges it that it may bring forth more fruit. 
Now you are clean through the word which I have spoken to you. Abide in me, and I in you. As the branch cannot bear fruit of itself. You see, without Christ, you are cut off from God. So prophecy is unknown. Doctrine is unknown. The truth cannot be known, and you cannot grow. The branch cannot bear fruit of itself, except it abide in the vine. No more can you, except you abide in me. I am the vine, you are the branches. He that stays in me, and I in him. The same brings forth much fruit. For without me, you can do nothing. So, spiritual Judah in our day today are the people who have the commandments of God and the testimony of Jesus Christ. And prophecy is understood this way. Not by people practicing Judaism. That is impossible. Because they are not tied to Christ. He that stays in me and I in him, the same brings forth much fruit. For without me you can do nothing. Genesis 49. His eyes shall be red with wine. Verse 12 and his teeth white with milk. Now milk is representative of doctrine and wine, prophecy, true prophecy. There is scriptures where people can be drunk on wine false wine, false prophecy, false doctrine. But this is in a positive sense for those who are attached to Jesus Christ in Genesis 49. And Genesis 49, speaking of the tribe of Judah, is not talking about carnal, the religion, the carnal religion of Judaism. But those who worship in spirit and in truth, who are tied to Christ. The reason I say all this is because it is us. We have the oracles of God. We have the teaching of God. We are being fed by Jesus Christ. When I see people looking to Judaism and the land of Israel for certain things, I, I don't know what to say anymore. You're looking to people who deny Jesus Christ. It's crazy to think that way. But there is such deception in this time, and it is, has been going on for decades for 70 years now, over 70 years. There's misunderstanding and it's looking at the scriptures in a very, very carnal, physical way still and not understanding the spirit. John 15. If a man abide not in me, he is cast forth as a branch and is withered. And men gather them and cast them into the fire and they are burned. You abide in me and my words in you. You shall ask what you will and it shall be done to you. See? In Christ, that is true. Because the Spirit of God feeds His people. But it can be done no other way. So when people are looking to false religion, 
the religion of Judaism for information about God's times and seasons and things of that nature, we better think again. Because that's not being fed by Jesus Christ then. That's being fed by the very religion that denies Christ. And I really don't know how to make it any plainer than that. When we have the Word of God, we have the Spirit of God dwelling in us, and it is the Word of God that reproves, and it instructs, and gives us everything we need. And Jesus Christ is that Word made flesh. Herein is my Father glorified that you bear much fruit, so shall you be my disciples. And the Father, as the Father has loved me, so have I loved you. Continue in my love. If you keep my commandments, you shall abide in my love, even as I have kept my Father's commandments, and abide in his love. These things I have spoken to you, that my joy might remain in you, and your joy might be full. Romans chapter 3. Romans chapter 3 verse 21 But now the righteousness of God without the law is manifested being witnessed by the law and the prophets even the righteousness of God which is by faith of Jesus Christ to all and on all them that believe for there is no difference for all have sinned all have broken the law sin is the transgression of the law and come short of the glory of God, being justified freely by His grace through the redemption that is in Christ Jesus, whom God has set forth to be a propitiation through faith in His blood to declare His righteousness for the remission of sins that are past through the forbearance of God to declare, I say, at this time his righteousness, that he might be just and the justifier of him which believes in Yeshua. Where is boasting then? Is it excluded? By what law? Of works? No, but by the law of faith. Therefore we conclude that a man is justified by faith without the deeds of the law. In other words, you cannot just save yourself by doing the deeds of the law. You can't be your own savior by following the letter of the law and, and gaining your own salvation that way. But it is through Christ, he amplified the law, magnified it. That in the spirit, the law is written on the heart. Not that we are to break the law. And Paul is about to say that. Is he the God of the Jews only? Is he not also of the Gentiles? Yes, of the Gentiles also. Seeing it is one God which shall justify the circumcision by faith and the uncircumcision through faith. Do we then make void the law through faith? Do we do away with the law? Do we not keep the law through, because we have faith now? 
God forbid. For we establish the law. We establish the law. We establish the law. Does Judaism establish the law? Who denies Christ? Who goes by the letter of the law? We establish the law in the spirit. So that is spiritual Judah. We are not to do away with the commandments of God. That is known. That is understood by many that listen. That come here and listen, I suppose. So many in traditional Christianity just don't understand the words of Paul because they are tricky. Peter even spoke about Paul's teachings, how the unlearned can stumble at them and not get it. And in our day today, that, that has never been so true. With all the thousand different denominations and congregations and groups in, Christian, in the Christian world, so-called. But the true Jew is the Jew in spirit. And the religion of Judaism is totally carnal. So we again, the whole point being we cannot get our information on God's holy things. We must go directly to Him. We have no barrier between us anymore. And some people look to Judaism and it's especially when speaking of you know, there's a ton of people over the years, I think of the Worldwide Church of God following a Jewish calendar. That calendar was made by the very people who denied Christ after they were kicked out of the land by the Romans, after the second temple was destroyed, which Christ foretold would happen. That calendar does not know God's holy times, appointed times. It is a man-made carnal calendar. The carnal mind is the mind of the beast. It is the mark of the beast in the end. It is man not following the commandments of God, but going by his own carnal mind and being cut off from the spirit. So we have to drive these points home to understand going, going further what does God say in his word? What does he command us to do? And what does man's tradition say? Because that has infiltrated a lot of the minds of good people out there who are get caught up in the traditions of uh, Judaism. And we have to beware of the leaven of the Pharisees. Just a little bit of leaven. A little bit of something wrong there that goes against God's word that either adds to it or takes away from it and it's a tradition it looks like it might be in the Bible but it's not really there can tweak your mind and have you kind of veer off course little by little into the distance and when the storm comes when it's raging you don't want to be in a position like that you want to be on solid ground in that time and that's why we're going over these things now and the holy days are coming quickly we're in February and I want to go over all that going forward But we have to understand these things in Genesis 49 spiritually. So much of that is, is looked at, was looked at in the worldwide church of God and scattered groups and in these Hebrew roots movements. It's all physical. It's all about where certain peoples are, <laughs> people are. And, and that brings us to Matthew 7. You know, a good, every tree 
is known by their fruit. God, Jesus Christ said, Matthew 7, beware of false prophets. The only way to understand prophecy is being attached to Christ. Who people are spiritually, to understand that is to truly discern the body and have eyes to see. Beware of false prophets which come to you in sheep's clothing, but inwardly they are ravening wolves. You shall know them by their fruits. Do men gather grapes of thorns of figs of thistles? Even so, every good tree brings forth good fruit, but a corrupt tree brings forth evil fruit. A good tree cannot bring forth evil fruit. Neither can a corrupt tree bring forth good fruit. Every tree that brings not forth good fruit is cut down and cast into the fire. Why, by their fruits you shall know them. And we will continue this.